Okay, so step six, what we want to do is find what's called the p-value. There are lots of different types of hypothesis tests, but the test that we're doing is called the p-value test. Okay, and there are three tests that we can choose from to find the p-value. So the rule is if the null, I'm sorry, if the alternative hypothesis, h sub 1, has a not equal equation, then what you do is you need to find the area underneath your, stand, your normal standard distribution curve and it's based off of our critical value which we just solved in step 5 as 3.55 so you put down your critical value 3.55 and you're gonna find the area underneath what we call a tail this is one tail right so the p-value equals 2 times this area. So you need to find the area underneath this tail, multiply it by 2, and that is your p-value. If the null hypothesis has a not equal equation. Now if you look back on step 2, or step 3, for us, the alternative hypothesis has a greater than equation, right? For us, the null hypothesis is p greater than 0.80, right? So that sh you should see this in step three. So, so we wouldn't be using this test, but you should know what it is in case you see other problems with different alternative hypotheses. Okay, so this test is called the two-tailed test. Okay, and you use the two-tailed test if the null, if the alternative hypothesis has a not equal sign. Okay. Feel free to rewind. We're going to move on to the second type of test. So obviously this one is not the one we're going to be using. So the second type of test is this. If the alternative hypothesis has some sort of less than equation then you're going to find the area on what's called the left tail okay most likely the critical value would be something negative it would be z a negative something and then you'd find this area on the left of it right that's why it's called the left tail so this area, the p-value equals that area. So you don't multiply by 2. It's just a left-tailed test. So we call this the left-tailed test. Because you're just finding the area underneath the left tail, just the area. And that would give you your p-value. Okay, and again, for the problem that we're looking at, number six, we wouldn't be using this test. But you should have in your notes and understand it in case you run to a problem where the alternative hypothesis has a less than sign in it. Okay, and then the last type of test we could run is if the alternative hypothesis has a greater than sign which ours does, right? If you look at step three, the alternative hypothesis has a p greater than 0.80. So we're going to be looking for the area under the right tail. So if you draw the system of standard distribution and you put down where your z, where your critical value z is, or your test statistic, I'm sorry, this area is your p-value. So p-value 
equals that area. Okay? So let's go ahead and figure that out because for us, z equals 3.55 and you'd look up z equals 3.55 in the back of your book, right? Table A2. And what it tells you is that this area to the left of 3.55 is 0.9999. Okay? It's the it's the last entry on the table, bottom on the right page. It says 3.5 and up. The area is 0.9999, which means that this area on the right should be one say it should be one minus point nine 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 which means it equals point zero 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 one and that's our p-value so this is called the right tailed test okay so there's three types of tests right two-tailed, left-tailed, and the right-tailed. And it's all based on what the alternative hypothesis is. For our case, we had p greater than 0.80. That's from step three. So we have to use the right-tailed test, which means we find the area underneath the right tail. And since our test statistic, z equals 3.55, that meant that this area to the left based off the table is 0.9999 and then the area to the right which is what we want is 1 minus 0.9999 or 0 0.0001 okay so now we can say that our p-value, let's write that here real quick p-value equals point zero 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 one. Okay, and then step seven, you want to determine your significance level. Determine significance level. And what you see is that in the question they tell us that the significance level is point oh five. So make sure you're looking at the question in your book on page 420, number 6. The significance level is 0 0.05. And the symbol for that is alpha. Okay, so alpha equals 0 0.05. And then in step 8, we compare the significance level to our p-value. Right? So if, if your significance level if I'm sorry, if your p-value is less than or equal to your significance level, then we reject our null hypothesis. If the p-value is greater than our significance level, then we can't reject the null hypothesis. Okay, why is that important? Is because we're going to come to a conclusion about this claim based on whether or not we reject the null hypothesis. Okay, so first let's might be a little bit confusing, but first let's go ahead and compare these two values. Well, 0 0.0001 is much smaller than 0 0.05, right? So it would, it would be this guy, much smaller. P p value is smaller than our significance level, so that means we have to reject the null hypothesis. So what does that what does that mean? Let's go ahead and write down our hypothesis again. Okay. Oops. Let's delete that real quick. So our, remember, from step three, our alternative, our null hypothesis was that P 
equals 0 0.80 from step three. And remember, our original claim was that P is more than 0.80, right? That's the original claim from the problem. And then the opposite of the claim from step two was that P was less than or equal to 0.80. So this stuff you don't have to write down, but I'm rewriting it so we can see it in the video. So remember, what we just said is we had to reject this based off of step eight. We had to reject this guy. So what does that mean? Well, P equals 0 0.80 is tied to this equation because here's where the equal sign is, right? So if we reject this, that means that there may not be enough evidence to support this. And if there's not enough evidence to support this, then this claim, this equation, might be okay. Now, with these types of tests, we can never say for certain anything. We can't say something is not true or something is true. What we can say is, and I'll write this down, the best that we can say in this case is, there is not enough evidence to deny original claim. And that would be your conclusion. This would be step nine. There's not enough evidence to deny the original claim. So let's review this one more time. In step eight, we found out that we had to reject our hypothesis, right? Our null hypothesis, we have to reject this. And if we reject this, that means that this may not be true because here's where the equal sign is, right? And if this may not be true, then this may be okay. And we're not sure, but at least we know that we, we can't reject it yet because this guy is not true. This, this guy may not be true. And since this guy may not be true, then, the, then this, which is the opposite of each other, right? Then this may be okay. So the best we can say is there is not enough evidence to deny original claim. Now just as an example, let's say that the equal sign was here. So if we rejected the null hypothesis, that means we would actually say that there isn't, that we can't support this guy. If we reject this, that means this may not be good. So we could say something like there is evidence, there, there is not sufficient evidence to support this. We can't say it's wrong, but we can say that there's not sufficient evidence to support this. One of the best ways to figure out how to word your conclusions is to check out page 403 in your book. Page 403 gives you a diagram on how to word your conclusions based off of your test. And you'll notice that you notice that it's a it looks like a little complicated diagram, but it's really easy to follow once you start reading through it. And it gives you the, the words, the phrasing on how you can express your conclusion at step nine. Okay, hopefully that helps. I know this part can be a little confusing. We're gonna go through it again in class uh, when we meet next.